Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Technology Learning Collaborative webinar on the PHL Career Portal. My name is Kate Rivera. I'm a consultant with TLC, and I'll start just by sharing a little bit with you about the organization. So the Technology Learning Collaborative is a professional development organization in Philadelphia dedicated to digital inclusion providers and advocates. So our mission is to drive the digital literacy, access, and inclusion conversation in Philadelphia by promoting professional collaboration, training, and networking among organizations and institutions that have a dedicated interest in moving these areas forward. Um, if you're not already a TLC member, um, you can visit our website um, for more information, sign up for our uh, email list. And I also wanted to mention um, that we just launched a Slack group um, as an additional place where you can um, join and chat with other folks who um, are working in the digital inclusion space. Um, where you can you know, share resources, ask questions, discuss best practices. Um, and I'll, I'll drop that link in the chat as well. We just launched this space. It'd be really great to have more folks join and um, introduce yourselves and, and start the, the conversation. A uh, couple quick housekeeping notes. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the TLC YouTube channel. Uh, and we'll also be emailing the slides out um, to everyone who registered for today's event. So you'll get a copy of the PowerPoint. And if you have any questions or, or comments during the presentation, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, so our presenters for today, I'll just do um, quick introductions before I, I turn things over to them. Um, our, our, and our presenters are from Philadelphia Works. We have Hillary Shane is the manager of training and upscaling at Philadelphia Works. Hillary coordinates the organization's vocational training strategy, including ensuring high quality training investments with clear pipelines to employment for Philadelphia career seekers. She and her team are continuously expanding the organization's capacity to respond with agility to innovative training and skill building opportunities with a focus on competency-based blended learning in-person and virtual options. Hillary is also charged with shepherding the implementation of the PHL Career Portal, which we'll be learning about today uh, as a resource and training virtual platform for Philadelphia residents. Um, also, also joining us today is Charles Raguchi, who joined Philadelphia Works uh, in, in June of 2021 as an LMS administrator and implementation specialist in the operations business unit. Charles is responsible for supporting a multi-stage LMS implementation process, working alongside the Accord LMS engineering specialists and Philadelphia Works operational staff to manage LMS system administration and the project implementation team. Um, Hillary and Charles, uh, Please take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kate. I feel like I sang you like my bio from the website and I, I realized I was like, oh God, she's going to read all of it now. <laughs> but I appreciate the intro. Um, so um, yeah, we're going to talk about the portal today. Um, I'm excited um, to just give you a little bit of an intro, talk about kind of what what's on the portal, who it's for, um, and really do a, a bit of a demo and dig in um, around, around the portal itself. Um, so you guys get to see it. Um, I want to start off by encouraging you all, actually, Kate, if you can go to the next slide real quick. Um, so I'm going to talk, um, give you guys about like first 10 minutes about like what's on the portal and, um, you know, what value it, it might bring to you. Um, I want you to know, though, that while I'm doing this, I will not be offended if you actually go and check out the portal, because I think at the end of the day, um, that's going to be the most valuable piece. And so, Charles, if, if you could actually put the, the website for the portal in the chat. Absolutely. 
um, and, and the access code. So for all of our community partners and other partners, we encourage folks to use the access code partners um, as you're registering. It takes like just two minutes, super, super quick to register for the portal. And I would encourage you guys to take a look. Um, so that's the first thing I wanna say. Um, and then I wanna ask you guys, I, I'm interested before I kind of dig in on this to get a sense of if you all have heard of the portal. Um, so if you all have heard of PHL Career Portal before, can you guys um, give me a thumbs up the, uh, with the reactions at the bottom? Give me a thumbs up if you've heard of the portal. some thumbs ups good so some folks have heard of it great so the portal has been around um, we we did kind of a soft implementation last December and we kind of officially announced in March of last year and have really been building out since then Charles joined us in June and has been a major um, major benefit asset for for implementation as well um, but I, I am, and so I'm glad to hear that folks have heard of it. I think my next question for you all is how many of you all can tell me what's on the portal or how it might benefit you and um, the participants you work with, the individuals you work with? If you can, if you could give me a thumbs up again. Not seeing any thumbs ups, which I envisioned would be the case. Oh, okay, I got one. I got one. So I think one of the things that I've heard just in some conversations with partners is, okay, I've heard of this, but I have no idea how I what I can actually do with it. Um, so part of the goal today is to kind of dig in on what's on the portal, how it might actually benefit the people you're working with, um, and how you might then talk about it to participants that you're that you're working with or, or engaging with on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you can jump to the next slide, Kate. Okay, so what is PHL Career Portal? So PHL Career Portal is an online training and resource hub for Philadelphia career seekers. The purpose is uh, for them to be able to enhance their job search, to explore career opportunities, and to develop professional skills. That's the primary goal for the portal. Um, it, uh, customers or career seekers are able to take advantage of on-demand um, resources and content. They're able to access live workshops across the city of Philadelphia, um, engage with some special programs or special training courses that we're offering, um, and link to other external websites. Next slide. I like to talk about, okay, that's the portal, but what's actually on the portal? I think that that's particularly important um, in understanding what's in it for me. Um, so broadly, the portal has a library of different programs. Um, we have live workshops that are available and offered currently primarily facilit facilitated through the PA Career Link Centers. Uh, we offer courses that are on demand interactive courses that are usually between I would say 15 minutes and 45 at the most. Um, and one of the things I really love about these is that, you know, they're really not, um, if any of you all have ever um, experienced what I would describe as a really bad on like online e-learning course, you know, one of those compliance courses where you have to spend eight hours going through and clicking next, 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 that is not what is <laughs> what these courses are. Um, they're really intended to be interactive, um, uh, interactive training sessions, courses that allow folks to really drive their own learning, make decisions based on what they're they're most interested in. Um, we also have resources on the portal, and I make this distinction between trainings or courses and resources all of our resources are external, right? So one of 
the thought process or one of the goals uh, when we first launched the portal was that this could really be an entry point um, or a launch pad for a ton of different career seeker resources across Philadelphia. We are what I would describe as content neutral. We are not necessarily invested in you need to take our courses, you need to take our workshops. We, um, the portal is really intended to, to simplify the experience for Philadelphia career seekers so that rather than having to go six different places and link to six different websites, it's all in one space. And then last but not least, we have programs through the portal. So the, the, the main program we've been focused on is the Skills Forward Initiative. There are three courses uh, being offered through the Skills Forward Initiative, and I'll go into a little bit more detail on those in a, in a second. Next slide. So the, the content available through my courses, these are our self-paced courses, are really categorized into four different areas or themes. Um, the first one is around job search training and things like how to uh, how to upgrade your resume, how to uh, do a panel interview, things like that. Um, the second category is around career exploration. So it's for folks who are like, I'm not really sure where I want to, what I want to be doing right now, or I think I may want to switch careers. That's where, where I would direct folks um, who are in that situation. The third one is around your digital skills and your adult ed. And I will tell you that this is probably um, the area that we have the least at this moment. And I think it's one of the things or one of the reasons why I'm most excited about engaging with this group is to really beef up our content in that area. If you all have recommendations, uh, we do have some additional content um, that we are um, about to put on the portal um, that is coming from Goodwill primarily. Um, I'm sure many of you all are familiar with it. These are primarily external websites or external resources that we would be connecting to, but are definitely open to additional recommendations there. And then the fourth category are professional skills. So those are things like conflict management, um, uh, time management, things like that. Next slide. Okay, my workshops. These are live workshops. Right now they're all virtual and we are really just starting to build out um, our capacity in this space but this is a learning management system right at its core it, uh, we, we call it um, a training and resource hub but one of the advantages of using a learning management system is it allows us to um, track like allow folks to register for a class and then track their attendance and assess um, if they know the information if they've taken taken um, taken from it what, what was intended. So that's really what these live workshops are for. And last but not least, oh, my resources. So I wanted to highlight a couple of resources that we currently have on the portal that I think may be relevant to you. Um, the first one is North Star. So you'll see as you go on the portal um, and you click you know, if someone goes and clicks digital literacy or digital skills, they will get connected to North Star. And obviously, I, I would imagine this is not new for you all. Um, the goal is to have a single entry place for these resources so that um, so that you uh, as advocates, you as as uh, navigators don't have to remember seven zillion things, but also that your participants similarly um, have a single place for accessing many of these resources. And the other resource I've highlighted here is a training program for, tra uh, for transportation, distribution, and logistics. It's offered by um, Prologis, which is a company that works in that space. I'm gonna skip this now because I'll show you guys this one uh, once we demo the site. And then last but not least, in terms of my programs, you have your Skills Forward initiative. How many of you guys have heard of Skills Forward? Thumbs up, thumbs down, yes, no, maybe so. Um, this is a partnership between Philadelphia Works, the Chamber of Commerce of Greater Philadelphia, Accenture, and Graduate Philadelphia. And we are offering these courses through the portal, uh, through the PHL Career Portal. 
Um, it's a great opportunity for folks who are interested in maybe transitioning to IT, to health, uh, health technology and administration, and to entrepreneurship or looking to start a business to really start to dabble and get comfortable and understand kind of what's in each of those industries. If you do know folks who may be interested in applying, I would refer them um, to the portal to, uh, to apply. Okay, any questions at this point before I kind of jump in to the next section? Okay, so the, the big thing that I want to make sure that I emphasize to you all is that everyone can use the portal. Um, Philadelphia Works manages primarily the public workforce system. So we work very closely with the PA Career Link Centers, the PA Career Link System. However, you do not need to be a PA Career Link customer, is the term that we use in order to access these services. So for me, it's it's just a really fantastic entry point or introduction into the PA Career Link resources for those who are not already connected. There is no age limit to sign up for the portal um, with the exception of like maybe specific programs or courses, but beyond that, you know, you, anyone at any age um, who's able to navigate is able to sign up. Um, and the portal is available um, through cell phone, uh, tablet, et cetera. It is mobile friendly. Next slide. So how does the portal benefit career seekers? You guys are gonna hear me say this multiple times. Uh, one of the things that I, um, I am most excited about, uh, about the portal is that it really is a single entry point for career seeker training and resources. So we are working with the library. We are working with uh, Parks and Rec, uh, with the kit centers. We are working across the city to really pull in resources that, um, that ideally will be in one place that folks can go to the portal. And that can really be a jumping off point for a number of these resources. It's a place where folks are able to participate in workshops um, and interactive on-demand courses virtually. So really big focus on, on flexibility, on simplicity, and allowing folks to kind of, to, uh, and really meeting folks where they are um, and, and what their, their career seeker needs are, or their skill building needs are. For folks who have childcare or transportation challenges, um, we're able to serve folks from home which is um, obviously super key, especially these days. Um, and last but not least, it's really customizable. So we, are, um, we have de designed a system and a program that allows learners dr to drive their own learning um, and to explore on their own. Next one. Okay. So before I jump into how does the portal benefit partners, I actually want to do a quick demo of the system to give you guys a sense of what I'm talking about. Because um, it feels like, you know, without being able to see it, it's harder to really start thinking about how this might be relevant for you. So Kate, if I could take over. Okay, can folks see my screen? Yeah, great. Move it over here. So, um, the first thing I want. We'll, we'll jump to that in a second. So you'll see this, this lovely screen here um, is your homepage. So once someone registers through the, for the portal, this is the first screen they'll get to. So you'll see at the top here, there's a bunch of, of this highlights some really key aspects or areas where we wanna di direct folks for the portal. Um, it's really divided, the homepage is divided into these categories that I had 
referenced before. So you have the skills forward programs at the top. Um, you have your professional skills. Sorry, you have your job search. You have your professional skills. You have your digital literacy and academic skills. And you have your career exploration or industry exploration. And in, in these areas, at least at this point, you'll see there's a mix of your live, your, um, your on-demand courses and your resources to, or links to external resources. So as you're going through, what we have done is we have set it up so to simplify things, right? Understanding that not everyone is gonna be comfortable in this space. We have tried as much as possible to simplify this experience for someone um, who is new to the portal, who may not be as comfortable with technology. So all you're gonna do is click and it opens up. And this is one of our interactive courses here. Similarly, for some of our, oh, my screen sharing is paused. Can folks see? We can see it. It looked like it was paused, paused up and not moving. Okay. Let me try again. There you go. Okay. So um, for your um, for your digital literacy skills, similarly, you're gonna click the link. This may be why it paused because it opens up to another screen. I'm not sure if you guys can see that piece. Um, but it opens up then to, to those other resources that we vetted and highlighted as um, high quality resources for career seekers. So all of this is on your home page. Um, if you want to go and kind of look, get a broader look at all of these courses, you can go to my courses at the top here and see all of your options. You can see here, for instance, virtual workshops. So these are those live workshops that I had referenced that are offered through the PA Career Link Centers. You will start to see more of these. Um, this, uh, this selection is going to expand out over the next few months. Um, and we've started to also engage our partners in this work. So some of our MOU partners, our partners that work directly with the PA Career Link Centers, are going to also start offering workshops through, um, through this through the portal. And then my programs here. So as I mentioned before, let me go through first to this page. So the Skills Forward Initiative, um, all of the information for the Skills Forward Initiative is on this website. Right? You don't, and this page is actually available. You do not have to, to register for it. But the Skills Forward Initiative, there are three tracks that folks are able to access. There's the IT customer support, health tech administration, and entrepreneurship. Um, these courses, just as a you know major disclaimer, have to be you have to be given access to them in order to to start exploring. Um, if you are interested in specifically the entrepreneurship one, you can go to access code. You and or your, your um, participants can go to access code and put in a special access code. It's me out here. Skills forward, Charles. Don't remember. Skills forward. I was just muted. It's skills forward one. Yeah, skills forward one. And that will give you that additional content if folks are interested. Um, the other thing I want to highlight under my programs um, that I'd started to reference before is that we have information here about our vocational skills training programs. So through the PA Career Link Center, folks are able to access uh, free vocational skills training programs that lead to industry recognized credentials. So these are things like phlebotomy, um, uh, IT um, CompTIA courses. Um, all of this information is here and is connected through the portal, again, because the thought process is that this is really your single entry point 
for information about for PA career link for um, PA career seekers or Philadelphia career seekers. So through this website, you would then get connected to all of our training programs and all that information is here for you. Any questions or thoughts on that? I have a question, Hillary. It's Juliet. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. Um, so the Skills Forward Initiative, are those online trainings also credential programs? Um, how do they like connect with the, your like in-person training programs or not? So um, a lot of these, we call, I like to call them fundamentals courses. So um, for individuals who are going through them, some of them may come out and, and find their way into an entry level role that doesn't require a credential. Um, but in, in other cases, they're a really good um, entry point or bridge to some of our other vocational skills training programs. Uh, one of the things we've heard from the instructors, um, so we have instructors that we pulled from some of our vocational skills training programs from peers, from job works. Um, and what they have told us is that it's also just a really good way for folks to explore different opportunities um, and get a sense of, of the best path forward for them. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah, definitely. There's also a question in the chat, Hillary. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All users are going to be on the portal because they have so um, that's a great question, Steve. It says, all, are all users going to be on the portal because they have an access code? You do not need an access code to access the portal um, or to access the courses on the portal. Um, what the access code is going to allow you to do is access additional content, right? So um, it's gonna allow you to access the, the skills forward content only. Um, so if you, um, if someone is interested in taking the entrepreneurship course or is interested in taking the health tech administration or the IT, they would be given an access code for that. But your typical person, um, if you're helping them get started, all you're going to do is you're going to go to myphlcareerportal.org, you're going to go to register, and then you're, they would fill out a registration form here. There is a space that says if you have an access code, please enter it here, but they do not need an access code um, to register. They, they'll still have access to, to all of that content with the exception of your, your special programs that we have, we're enrolling people um, a little differently. And that's really what that access code is for. I'll also offer kind of an extra piece to this, which is I think I'd encourage you all um, when, when we first started um, to put in that access code uh, partners. And part of the reason for that is not because it really impacts what, what courses you're seeing, but it does allow us to identify you on the back end so that we can, so we can distinguish between you and another career seeker. So that's why we ask folks to, to do, put in that access code. And similarly, if you're working um, with the portal with one of your programs, we can give you an access code to give to your participants so that we can pull a list of just your participants. Any questions on that? So I do want to highlight it takes like a minute to register. Um, we. Once you hit that register button, um, your participant, the person you're working with will get an email. Uh, we do encourage you all just in case to check spam. Uh, we have taken some steps to try to make sure that, that those emails aren't going to spam, but we but just um, wanna give you guys a heads up on that, that, that sometimes those emails do go to spam. And then once you get that email, you hit, you click to confirm and then um, that you and or whoever you're working with can get started. And then one more thing before I go back to the, the presentation itself. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, after this, 
some of the resources available to you all as partners um, or community, you know, at, or as community partners um, of the PA Curling and Philadelphia Works. And one of these resources is our help and customer support page. There are a ton of resources. You have frequently asked questions here. Um, I believe in some cases there, there are some links to guides um, and additional information. You will start to see some videos in this section as well. And, I, and then I think most importantly at the top here, um, you can put in, um, submit like a, a form to our help desk um, for them to receive. And this is for anything from, I don't, you know, I need help navigating the system to more tech, tech issues, which is one of, which is I think our biggest ask of you all um, is to submit like, hey, this isn't working um, so that we can keep track of it and make sure that the system is working properly for everyone. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing and go back a little bit. Go back to the presentation if I can. And Lou, I see your I see your message. It's great that you're registered. I love it. <laughs> okay. So, how does the portal benefit partners? One of the things that um, we think is, is most important and, you know, are always looking for feedback around how to do better with this, but um, we know that not all of you are workforce um, experts um, and are, are, are invested in putting together all the resources you might need um, to, to serve your participants. Um, in some cases, individuals are coming to you who have needs around digital literacy and also are looking for a job and are also looking to develop additional skills. So the goal of this is to, to really be a one-stop shop or hub for you and your staff um, to refer folks to um, so that you don't have to kind of start um, from scratch if you're working with someone who is also looking for those resources. The portal is also just a really great opportunity for individuals to explore um, their various career options. We know a lot of times folks come in to the PA Career Link Centers um, and our workforce advisors will say, okay, you know, what do you want to talk about? What are you interested in? And they just don't know. Um, and so this is also just a great way to get folks started um, in thinking about like, okay, well, I could do, you know, I could be a truck driver or I could do um, work in a warehouse, or I could work in healthcare clinical, or I could, you know, maybe I, I don't like the sight of blood. Um, I really like the concept of healthcare, but it turns out that I really don't want to do that. Maybe I want to work in healthcare administration. So this is a great place to kind of get folks started um, and allow them to kind of drive their own learning and exploration. Um, and then last but not least, it's a local system. So we are really building um, the content and resources um, based on Philadelphia career seeker needs. Next slide. So I talked about this as maybe a little bit of a repeat. Um, the one thing I would add, just a couple of things um, on, in addition to this. Um, for individuals who are interested, in, interested, um, there is an opportunity for you all to link your virtual workshops, webinars, et cetera, through the portal. And I think that's um, you know, something that we are exploring with one of our, our MOU partners at the moment. But if that's something you're interested in, I'll tell you how to, how to um, move forward in, explore, in exploring next steps for that. Um, and then the last thing I wanna highlight for you all is that um, in some cases, this is a really good supplement um, for your programs. Um, we have a couple of our, our contracted vendors that, that are using our entrepreneurship content right now to really um, to amplify, to supplement what they're currently offering their participants. 
So, it, you know, I, I would certainly welcome you all to explore that further and think about how you might um, you might use what's what's there. And then um, the last thing I want to highlight for you all, last sort of thing I want to highlight for you all is around some tools we have developed to really help you all share um, and highlight the portal and talk about it with customers or, or learners or participants, whatever term we're using today. Um, the first one is that we have a ton of marketing and pr promotional pieces in the form of flyers and postcards. I'll show you guys our postcard here it has a little QR code on the back for folks to easily pick up their phone, take the, the picture of it, and they can go onto the portal super easily. Um, so that's the first thing. We also have a social media toolkit that we've developed for partners to start spreading the word um, and sharing the sharing information about the portal with their partners, with their stakeholders, and with participants as well. Um, we have a talking points page that we've delivered um, that we've um, developed. Um, and then we also have open, uh, opened up the opportunity for those of you all who are working directly with participants like in a computer lab and or are, you know, your organization is working directly with participants in a computer lab. Um, we have offered our wonderful LMS administrator and some other um, individuals who are working with our help desk to do some training for those individuals on how to just just basic navigation for the portal. It's very simple. Um, but if you do have individuals you're working with who would benefit from that, we are happy to, to help set up that kind of a training. Um, uh, on top of that, we have a help page and a help desk. Um, for individuals to help troubleshoot issue, the issues. And in a second, I may ask Charles to jump in and, and talk a little bit more about what help desk resources are available. Um, and then last but not least, uh, we have a form that we are, uh, that is in development. And I think actually we're gonna build out a little bit more for partners and community organizations to, to engage with us, to request um, if they wanna submit workshops, if they are interested in posters or flyers or postcards, um, or if they just want to talk to us a little bit more about what content is on the portal and what they think, um, you know, what what additional resources we might add, we are going to put all of that. We're going to sort of direct all of that through a single form so that we can track it, um, and I'll send that to you guys after um, after this webinar. Any questions on that? And then I'm going to sort of kick it to, to Charles to talk a little bit more about a lot of the work we're doing to build out our help page and our help desk capacity. Thank you, Hillary. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah, it's a real pleasure to be here. And yeah, just to pick up a little bit uh, off of what Hillary was talking about earlier. Uh, actually, our help desk and support model is growing as we speak on the portal. Uh, the goal here is to give all our customers, our partners, and our staff members access to support uh, and, and using different access points so that whenever they need support, uh, you know, they can get it pretty much immediately. So on the help page, and uh, Hillary, maybe you could, could you, you, are you still showing your screen? I'm maybe not. You could, but Maybe I you could just that. switch over there as I kind of reference it. Of course, maybe driving Kate crazy, but I'm happy to do that. <laughs> yeah, she can do it. She's got it. <laughs> She's got it. So on the help page, uh, the first thing, first of all, all your resources are going to be on the help page uh, for contacting support and you contact support for anything. I mean, if you have a question, you can contact support with a simple question. If you have a technical issue with the site, something you know is is not working uh, on the site, let us know. The best way to do that is to use the contact form right there. So uh, you can see first name, last name, email address, and message, and basically that connects to our help desk. So behind the scenes, we have a help desk 
uh, that support form that you fill out uh, creates a ticket immediately in our help desk. And we have more than a few people uh, working our help desk right now. So we'll get access to that immediately and get back to you right away. And uh, if need be, if you're having some type of local computer issue related to the portal, we can actually uh, uh, help you on screen if need be. So we can do that also. And this is uh, uh, developed out right now. You can't see anything here on the actual portal page because it's all done behind the scenes, but that form will get in touch with us. At the bottom of the help page, we have a direct email that you can use and you can see right underneath that contact us uh, graphic there where it says use the contact us form or the help desk email that will generate an email to help at my PHL career portal on our Spiceworks, Spiceworks help desk. And that'll create a ticket automatically. So direct email is another good option. The form being first, direct email being next. And then that creates a ticket right on our help desk and allows us to uh, get in touch with you almost immediately. I urge you, if you're getting on the portal and you have questions or uh, something comes up to, to let us know, that's, that's how you contact us. So beside the direct email, we're also going to be deploying a help desk phone line that is not available right now at this particular moment, but that's going to be happening uh, probably in the next um, in the next few weeks. Uh, the help desk line will give you the option to contact us directly if you need to. Uh, of course, to, you know, during business hours, you can pick up the phone, give us a call and uh, we can surely help you that way. Uh, we can also reference the ticket that you put in uh, to the portal if you had put a ticket in first. And uh, that contacts either, you know, our support representatives that are working behind the scenes to, to help you out. So again, the goal here is to give our customers, our partners, and our staff immediate access to support. Uh, and usually you will get an email back pretty much, you know, within one business day. But I'd like to say, you're going to get an email back pretty much right away uh, from our support desk, and uh, we'll be, you know, working with you on that. So, if anybody has any questions about the support portal, let us know. I think that's probably about it for right now, Hillary. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you. So I think um, the last sort of piece that I have is around how to talk about the portal as you're, um, as you're meeting with potential participants. But before I do that, um, you know, I'm interested in hearing from you all around what ways you think you might, might be able to use the portal and if there are, um, you know, how you might be helping folks get connected to the portal. You know, I'm not I, I'm not as familiar with your work um, and the ways in which you guys are working with participants. So it'd be helpful to hear a little bit more about that. While while folks are, are gathering their, their thoughts, um, Hillary and Charles, wonder if you could speak to a little bit. Um, you know, thoughts on thoughts on how to make sure that this is really accessible for folks who may have low digital literacy skills, um, also the English language learners, is that something that you're looking for this kind of partner community to help with, or do you have plans for that? Mm -hmm. So a couple of things I, I would say, um, the, we are our target audience, honestly, for for the portal are folks with low digital literacy skills. Um, this was developed with individuals in mind who may not, you know, may not be interested, you know, who may have said, no way I'm getting on um, an online platform like this. Um, we know from <laughs> two years now of, of pandemic life um, and working from home that um, it's important to be able to connect career seekers virtually. And the goal with, with setting this up was to be able 
um, to give individuals who may not be as comfortable with technology um, a way to stay connected, even if they can't um, come in person, um, and to offer a range of different ways to do that. So whether that's just clicking on a link, whether it's um, uh, you know engaging through an interactive course or or just signing up for a live workshop. Um, and I think that live workshop piece is super important, right? Some people just don't like, they don't want to do the, the self-paced piece and I get it. Um, and, and that for, for me is super important to be able to give every, you know, give all of those options to be able to register to for the portal to go into the curling centers um, so that we're able to kind of offer the range of options there. Um, I would love love, love to um, talk with this group a little bit more though about if there are specific things um, that we can be doing to, to kind of lower barriers for some of our users. And I, you know, I, I think ultimately that will be to everyone's benefit. Um, some of those things we can, you know, we do have control over. Some of those things we know um, are, you know, we're slowly working with, with our developers to to start to to improve um, but that the intention is for this to be for folks who are low literacy so that's the first thing I would say um, and then the second piece for folks whose um, first language is not English we do have some content in Spanish and we'll actually be expanding out that content um, beyond that we we just I mean, we've certainly had this question before we kind of haven't gotten to to um, identify additional ways um, to serve individuals with limited English. Um, I will tell you that this is ADA um, uh, compliant. You know, all of the images, you can see descriptions. Um, so we are we are focused and certainly looking at that um, in terms of inclusivity. Hillary, I have a question kind of related to that, to Kate's question. Um, <laughs> How do you see, um, so so I know you guys are really closely working with OCF's adult ed. How do you see the portal interacting with the MyPlace campus um, system and the North Star system specifically? I'm just mm -hmm. curious what you're thinking is around that. Yes, so we started a conversation with North Star with, through OCF, uh, the Office of Children and Families a while back about um, setting up an integration. Um, right now, North Star doesn't have that capacity, unfortunately, um, but that is something, the intention is I think once um, they transition their data systems because they're moving out off of ASAP um, to revisit that conversation. Um, but at this point, there's no, um, we haven't been able to do that just because North Star doesn't have that capacity. Um, one of the things, though, that I, um, I'm excited about is really starting to build out our digital literacy capacity in this space, um, both just starting to make sure that we're offering, we have a number of, a, a ton of resources in terms of live workshops through the PA Career Link with a focus on that. Um, we also are offering, um, it was supposed to be in February, but I think in March, we'll be offering some courses um, there are some workshops from Microsoft. So we have uh, one of our board members is, um, is from Microsoft and is going to be doing some trainings in that space. And that will go under that, that my programs, those special programs, uh, we'll be able to register folks through there. So we are working towards things, I would say, but, but um, still have some work to go. And are you, I think I see a question from Lou, so I want to echo it. Do you see like partner organizations uh, having information on this portal, even if it's a live course that could direct folks to available courses, yes. as well as potentially building out online courses for you? Is that okay? Yes. In fact, I I would I would assume in most cases that we would be highlighting um, live workshops that folks could register for um, through the portal. That's the thought process. So what I'll do is, um, and we're presenting tomorrow to our um, our MOU partners, our mandatory partners through the PA Curling Centers, to 
been having a lot of conversations too um, with them. We're going to start, I think, to offer one of those um, those live workshops um, in the next month, I would say. Um, but I'm really interested in if other folks have uh, workshops or programs they're interested in offering through the portal, um, we're going to send out a form afterwards so we can start to get a sense of what that looks like and um, starting to, to offer that. Anything else? So yes, Lou, the short answer to that question is yes, there is an intention, intention to build out. Um, uh, by offering uh, partnering opportunities. I think a lot of the work we've been built, doing up until now is kind of building out our capacity, getting our help desk in place. We are in the process of, and Charles has been very, very busy um, transitioning our user interface, um, and that will happen in the next four weeks. Um, so we're, we're in a, a pretty solid place to start kind of engaging more effectively with our partners and, and other folks. I, um, I, I'm so sorry to have joined late. I was wrapped into another presentation, but I, I think you might want to use some of the gatekeepers at the libraries or at the senior centers who are starting, even, even where it's remote, they, they offer lunch at the senior centers. And so they drop a, and if this has already been said, I'm sorry, but uh, they, they add information into the lunch bags and so especially older people who are in fixed incomes and may need extra jobs now, you can't even get a job at Home Depot unless you know how to use the computer and you might be really helpful to them. Okay, no, that's great, that's great. So we are connected through the, to the libraries, but the senior centers, um, that's not something that we've talked about. So that's great, yeah, for sure. So I wanna take the last little bit um, to just kind of finish up with some talking points or ways to um, um, ways to really start, you know, as you're talking with customers or learners, whatever term we're using, um, something for you all to think about. So let me, in a minute, I was going to try to share my screen. Kate, can you help me out? Yeah, I think I just put it, is it not showing? I think I just put it up. Oh, did you? Okay. Can you see? I can. Can you click one more? Okay, so I'm interested in if someone says to you, what is the portal? Do you all feel like you can easily answer that question? Or, or maybe, you know, stumble through the answer to that question. Anyone want any brave soul want to want to try to answer what is the portal in one sentence or less? Well, I'll give you guys. Uh, I'll help you out for this one. Can you click? So the portal is a, an online training and resource hub for Philadelphia career seekers. So that is something that I have had done this presentation enough times that I've gotten pretty good at. That's what it is. It's an online training and resource hub for Philadelphia career seekers. Okay, so next question. What content is available on the portal? Anyone want to take a stab? Want to put it in the chat? What's on the portal? Okay, so we have live workshops, right? What else? Um, self-paced courses you have some external links to other to other websites and you have some special programs there you go okay next one how you access the portal here's a hint in what ways can you access the portal Cell phone, tablet, computer. Um, you can access the portal in any any of those three ways. 
from anywhere at any, at any time. Okay, and last one. Why should someone use the portal? Go ahead, Kate. So the biggest benefit for the portal is flexibility, right? It allows you to do things on your terms. Um, so you can take live workshops if you want. You can take self-paced courses. You can link to external, um, to other external resources. It's there for you to kind of drive your own learning um, and your own exploration. So those are, are your talking points. I, I'm sure that you all feel very confident moving forward with them, but we'll also share with you guys kind of like a talking points list um, or our talking points uh, one pager for you to take with you to talk with other participants. And that's it. Anything else for me? Um, thank you so much, Hillary and Charles, for, for taking the time to share this with us. Um, and thank you to everyone who uh, tuned in to learn a little bit about the PHL Career Portal. Um, I do want to take a moment to thank Comcast. They are one of the sponsors for TLC's webinar series, our monthly webinar series. Um, I also dropped a link in the chat to a really quick feedback form. Um, we do ask if you could just take a minute to let us know what you thought of the webinar, if you have any ideas for future webinars. This just helps us make sure that we're providing you with content that uh, you find to be useful and relevant. Um, and if there are no, fi any, any final questions or comments before we wrap up? I'm going to put my email um, in the chat if folks want to reach out. We will be sending out uh, the presentation from today, um, as well as additional resources from Philadelphia Works for everyone, everyone to everyone who registered. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Yep. See you later.